Greetings, colleagues. My name is Steve Sanger, and for those of you who don't know me, I teach both AP Biology and Human Anatomy here at the high school. Um, today I'm going to talk about how I have done some synchronous lessons by creating collaborative teams and letting kids work together. So before I get into this, um, quick shout out to Team Science. Here's a picture of us. Uh, we were on our way back from a rave party we all attended. Um, but everything that I'm about to talk about was developed in collaboration with someone in that picture. So thank you for all the problem solving and figuring out, uh, peeps. So here's the gist of what I do. So the first thing I do is I have students join uh, a synchronous live class at the start of the hour via a whole class Google Meet. I then introduce the activity and then I send them to their breakout rooms. Um, and then in those breakout rooms, students are going to collaborate in groups of roughly four. And for me, each group of four is a mix of students from the A through K, L through Z, and EVA categories. Uh, you don't have to do it that way, but um, because I have these science, it's like science equipment, it's, it's helpful to do it that way. Um, and then I'm actually able to check in on each Google Meet to monitor progress. And uh, the in-class students serve as anchors to sort of get my, my attention and work with you know, some sort of physical thing that's in the classroom, et cetera. Now, you may be thinking, hey, I heard that Google Meet is going to have an upgrade in October where they create breakout rooms. And that is true. Uh, but my understanding is that from those who have tested that out, what I'm hearing is that with this upgraded Google Meet, um, the breakout rooms need to be sort of individually created every single time you try and do it. So you have to like drag kids to a different room to get it going. Um, what I'm going to talk about in this in the screencast is a way to just kind of have like this long term collaborative group with the same kids that you just kind of set it up once and then it just carries through. So I think this is still relevant even after that um, upgrade comes through. Um, so what are the benefits of this? You know, the benefits is basically that it delivers the same benefits of collaboration um, in a hybrid setting, mostly. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it, it, it can be clunky and um, it's, it's not quite the same as just getting four kids to uh, you know, surround a table and work together on a task. But I think it's a pretty good compromise given the setting that we find ourselves in. And, and frankly, I'm okay with that because um, it, it's, you know, comforting to know that what teachers are doing every day in the classroom is not so easily replicated. Um, so another benefit, it, it does help me get to know my EVA students a little bit when they're joining these live sessions, and then it helps build a little bit more community among the students themselves, particularly those EVA students. Um, another huge thing, no ABAs, no ABAs. Um, I just take attendance while they work. And so instead of having, you know, 10,000 things to think about and worry about, um, when I do a synchronous lesson, I only have 9,999 things to worry about. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, some examples of things that I do. Pretty much any collaborative activity you might want kids to engage in can be done with this technique that I'm going to show you. So, you know, we do these like Pogel activities where kids analyze, you know, a model and then they answer questions about it. I've done labs. And, you know, I've had kids, uh, there's a lab where they add drops to a penny or they, you know, build uh, a manic, there's a mannequin model where they use clay to build the brain. We build brains this year. Um, I've even had kids dissect a brain. And in each case, what happens is I have kids in the room physically manipulating the thing. So they're adding the drops to the penny, they're building the clay mannequin model, or they're dissecting the brain. And then kids at home are working with them. So they're gonna be reading the directions, guiding the student doing the work, um, letting them know what to do next. Um, and then they work together. So the kid, you know, after they build their mannequin, they say, here, do you see everything? Yes, okay, any questions, good. Or we dissect the brain. Here, can you find the cerebellum? Um, you know, or what's this? And then the kid only says cerebellum. Um, and, and so, you know, they sort of work together to do that. And then, and then once they finish the actual like physical manipulation of whatever they're doing, then they can again collaborate together to answer questions um, and, and kind of make sense of it all. Um, I've also discovered Jamboard recently. Thank you, Liz Houts, for that. Um, but Jamboards are these sort of interactive whiteboards where in this instance, um, you know, I basically have kids drag these little terms into the, the box as appropriate. Um, you can set it up where they answer questions, where they create flowcharts and all sorts of things uh, with this kind of interactive whiteboard. And again, that works great for collaboration. So anything you can think of that requires collaboration can be done with this method. Um, some helpful things that I've learned along the way, 
One, uh, for technology, I've learned a little bit about interference. Um, it definitely works best if students have earbuds in the room. Um, and, you know, one time I forgot my earbuds. And so what I found is if I joined a Google Meet, then we would get some interference between me and the students in the room. And so um, wearing my own earbuds or just stepping into the hall farther away <laughs> can help with that. Um, I've also figured out how to just streamline some procedures to make things just go a little bit more smoothly. Um, so it's not such a chaotic feel. Um, and I'll talk about how I do that at the end of this. Um, I've also learned a little bit about interpersonal dynamics. So, you know, as teachers, we know it's really important to establish a sense of community at the beginning of the year. Um, and that is like that dynamic multiplied by like a bajillion. Um, with these Google Meets, the students just, they feel awkward. They just do. And so it's really important to try and encourage them to, um, to build some community. So any kind of community builders you can do within those groups are helpful. Uh, I, for example, was shocked to discover one of my groups was only communicating through the chat. Like they would not unmute their mic and just talk to each other. They were only doing things in the chat, which was shocking. Um, so I was a little surprised at just how reluctant some students were to just let themselves be on that Google Meet and interact in a meaningful way. Um, I think it's just easier to hide a little bit. And so um, trying to establish expectations of participation would be a really useful thing to do. So, um, if at this point you are not at all interested and you're like, you know what, thanks, but no thanks, I just don't think I'm going to do this, you should just stop right now and, um, and go away because now I'm going to get into the, the nitty gritty of how do I actually set this up. So if you're kind of thinking, you know, this might be useful to try and do a little bit more collaboration and set up some groups, um, keep watching and I'll just kind of walk you through the step by step. So, step one, you need to go to the Google Chrome Web Store and find this mute tab shortcut. Install that and unleash the power of silence. Alt Shift M is a keyboard shortcut that you're gonna want to keep in mind. So Alt Shift M, but you need to have this mute tab shortcut for this to work. And we'll get to why we need this later. Step two, you need to set up eight different Google Meets or however many collaborative groups you want. So if you've never done this, you basically can take this, this address right here and where it says EHS saying or AP Bio 1, delete that and change it to whatever you want, so long as it's aligned with district policy, no swear words. Um, and then you can just have eight uh, sessions like that. Step three is you're going to assign groups. Now, because I have kids who are in person and at home, uh, or in, yeah, and at home, um, I color coded them um, A through K, L through Z, and EVA. But again, if you choose to just have groups of one type of student, that works fine, but um, I color coded them. Uh, and then step four, post it to Schoology in an easy to find place. So Liz Houts and I teach AP Bio together and we created this lovely table that has everything they just kind of need to access all the time. It sits at the top by their week at a glance. Um, and you can see there's a breakout room link. So whenever I say go to your breakout rooms, they just click that link and it just lives up there and they can always access it. Now, once it's time to actually use these in class, um, this is sort of the cumbersome part. So I'll show you my workflow and how I manage this to kind of keep myself from going crazy because there's some tricks I learned along the way that, that really helped a lot. So, um, so here's what I do. So first of all, you open your breakout rooms and very importantly, I'm gonna grab that tab and I'm gonna pull it out into its own little spot so that I don't have my 5,000 tabs scrolled across the top, okay? Clean, clean sheet now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to open them in reverse order. So number eight, number seven, and I'll pause and now unpause that the job is all done. So um, that only took, well, it's, ooh, it's dinner time. That took like 45 minutes. Um, no, it only takes a few minutes. And the thing is you can do this in the morning and then it's done and just leave it going all day long. But I will warn you that it does drain the power on your computer. So. Uh, you, you probably will want to keep it plugged in or charge frequently. So note that by opening them in reverse order, again, I started with eight and I went down to one. What that means is my Google Meets are now in order. Group one is here, group two is here, group three is here, group four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're all, um, so now if somebody's like, I'm in group three, I can be like, oh, three, boom, there you are, okay? <laughs> so I've done that, but I'm not fully complete with opening yet. So next I need to go back to my Google Meets and once they're all there, I kind of go back to eight um, and now I have to join them all. So here's what I do, I click join now and then I click to get rid of that little thing. 
I hit pause uh, or mute on there and I mute my camera. And then very important, you ready for this? I'm going to hit shift alt M all at the same time. And what shift alt M does is it mutes this tab, which means when the students get on there, I can no longer hear them. If you don't hit shift alt M uh, or alt shift M all at the same time, um, then they won't be muted, which means you're going to have eight groups of kids all jabbering away. Okay, so I do my next one. Join. I hit mute my mic. I mute my camera. Alt shift M. Now the students are muted. So I have to go through and do this for all of my breakout rooms. Um, once that's done, then I'm ready to go. Um, so when a student, so then when the students join and they're getting ready to go, then what I do is I say, okay, now it is time to take attendance. So I say, students, I need five minutes of me time. Just give me a second. And then what I'll do is I'll look at my breakout rooms and I'll say, okay, there are four people. Um, I know that this kid is in class because it's an A through K day. And then these three should be there virtually. So then I go to group one. And if I see four little heads, then I say, okay, four people are there. Great. I go here, four people, four heads, <laughs> you know, here, four people. Oh no, there's only three heads. Who's missing? And so that way I can take attendance fairly efficiently. Um, when I finish with that, then I'm able to actually check in with the groups. And to do that, all I do is I hop on whatever meet I want to hop on. Um, let's say it's group seven. And then I hit that shift alt M. I unmute myself. I unmute um, the camera. And that way my students kind of know, hey, I'm here now because I don't believe in just creeping awkwardly on them. So, um, so they now know that I'm here. And then uh, by hitting Alt Shift M again, wow, it's just muting itself again, it's weird. Um, then I can ask, how's it going? What's happening? And then they can ask questions. I also count on the students who are in the room to help anchor things uh, with how they're going. So that's all I've got. Um, hopefully this is helpful for you. Like I said, I've been able to do some pretty interesting things and it really is helpful to, to not have to worry about the ABAs. And I think it's kind of good for kids to be meeting synchronously with groups anyway. So thanks for watching everybody.